Do you remember, ladies and gentlemen, November 22nd, 1963? Some of you may not have been born then, but I remember it vividly. You never forget it. Um, we had a little UPI machine clacking away in our newsroom, uh, and uh, I saw that, and they said something is happening. And uh, the next thing you know, I was ripping uh, copy off that and on the radio announcing what had happened that the President of the United States had been shot, assassinated in Dallas, Texas. And uh, 50 years later, the assassination of this beloved president still remains in the public consciousness. And now one author is beginning a fresh perspective to the tragic turning point in America's history. Take a look. In the 50 years since President John F. Kennedy was assassinated in Dallas, countless books, articles, and movies have tried to recreate the events of November 22, 1963, and to answer the lingering questions surrounding that fateful day. In his new book, End of Days, author James Swanson sets out a minute-by-minute -minute look at the day President Kennedy was shot. The riveting account takes readers through the streets of Dallas all the way to Parkland Memorial Hospital, where the nation learned the president's fate. He then recreates the last hours of the doomed assassin, Lee Harvey Oswald, and documents the days of national mourning for the fallen president. Well, James Swanson joins us now from Washington, and we welcome you. This interesting book is getting a lot of play these days. It's called The End of Days. Uh, let me ask you this. Everybody's talking about Harvey Oswald, Lee, uh, uh, Jack Ruby. Uh, what do you think? W was he part of a conspiracy? Was the mob involved? Or was he a lone actor? Oswald was really the man who shot President Kennedy, Pat. After 50 years of conspiracy stories, it was the mob, it was the CIA, it was naval intelligence, it was the FBI, it was even Lyndon Johnson, or the oil men are some of the theories. No one has yet disproved with real factual evidence that it really was Lee Harvey Oswald who fired those three shots from the sixth floor window of the Texas School Book Depository. Well, why did Jack Ruby shoot him? Jack Ruby was a violent man. He was a Dallas strip club owner of sleazy clubs. He was emotional. He was uh, undisciplined. He was upset all weekend that the president had been shot. And he visited the police station several times. He was one of those police buffs. He brought sandwiches to the cops at night, gave them free tickets to his strip club. And he walked down into the police station that day when Oswald was being transferred. He said he couldn't stand the smirk on his face. And he shot him. When the police dragged him to the floor, he said, take it easy, guys. It's me, Jack Ruby. Half the police knew who he was. Uh, he was an emotional man, and he just couldn't stand that Oswald had done this. And he told the police, somebody had to do it. You guys weren't going to kill him. <laughs> Camelot. Camelot. We think of the romantic Camelot. We assume <clears throat> that the Kennedy of clan all around had been uh, uh, using that term. But you pointed out that it wasn't the clan per se. It was somebody else. Tell us who started Camelot. Yes, you're, you're right, Pat. During the presidency, no one called JFK's administration Camelot. It was created one week later on the one-week anniversary of the assassination by Jackie Kennedy herself. She summoned Theodore White, the important journalist, to her home in Hyannisport, Massachusetts. He drove through a driving storm. She told him everything in a three-hour harrowing account of being in the car, of the shots, the blood, the, the head exploding. And then she said, but there's something else I want to tell you. We used to listen to a record at night of the Broadway musical Camelot. Once there was a, a brief shining moment, a place known as Camelot. And that's what our administration was. And it'll never be that way again. She told White that over and over again. And so from her home, he wrote the story, called it into Life magazine with her standing next to him. He let her edit the story. She penciled changes. The editors in New York said, there are enough of this Camelot. What's all this about? Jackie was standing there and she said, no, keep it in. The editors in New York even said, hey, Ted, is she listening to this right now? <laughs> He said yes, but he wanted to do it for her. He had been a Pulitzer Prize winner, but now he was not a journalist. He was acting as a courtier of the bereaved widow. And the December 6th issue of Life magazine had that story, John F. Kennedy, an epilogue. And that story ended, it will never be that way again. Once upon a time, there was Camelot. Jackie Kennedy created the most powerful myth in American politics that night. Well, we've all looked for it again. Can there be a recreation? Let me ask you this. Something is kind of gory, but they apparently took his brain out. And 
uh, I believe you're saying that somebody thinks maybe even Bobby Kennedy wanted that brain separate. So JFK was buried uh, without the brain, and the brain was in a box someplace else. Is that correct? What's the story? Yes, it, it's true, Pat. It's one of the most bizarre aspects of the story. John Kennedy was buried without his brain. It was taken out during the autopsy, put in a steel container, and then stored, of all places, in a Secret Service file cabinet for a couple years. Then it was moved to the National Archives. Then, on of all days, Halloween 1966, authorities looked for this footlocker containing the brain, uh, medical slides, blood samples, everything was missing. And my research indicates that the most likely suspect is actually the president's brother, Robert Kennedy, who took it. To this day, we don't know what happened to President Kennedy's brain or these autopsy or these medical materials. The thought was that Bobby wanted to hide the fact that his brother had Addison's and some of the other problems. He yes, wanted to keep. yes. Right. It was not to hide evidence of a conspiracy against the president because yeah. he really was shot by Lee Harvey Oswald. But JFK had been sick all of his life with many diseases, many medications. But the American people did not know that. JFK might not have even been elected in 1960 if the American people knew how sick he was. And I think Bobby did this as an act of loyalty to preserve the secrets of his brother's poor health. That's what it was. Uh, Kennedy was obsessed with sexual relations with women. He was a serial philanderer. I mean, unbelievable, multiple prostitutes, you name it. I mean, he shocked the Secret Service. Jackie knew that, though, didn't she? And she went along with it. Did, did you want to amplify that? Yes, Jackie did know the man who she was marrying. He reminded her very much of her father, who was very much like that. And he was, JFK was like his own father. And Jackie loved that man, too. We don't know why she put up with it. I'm convinced, as hard as it is to believe, they were in love. They were closer in the fall of 1963 than they'd ever been. They'd been married for 10 years. And that summer, their infant son, Patrick, died after living less than two days. That loss devastated Jackie, and it crushed the president. Something about that episode brought them closer together. She agreed to travel with him on all his campaign trips for the forthcoming election. She said, the only thing I couldn't stand after the baby died was to lose you, too. Something had changed with their relationship, and I believe they were getting closer in the fall of 1963. Now, because of his relationship uh, with Martin Luther King, he really wasn't a uh, liberal. Uh, he did, uh, I believe, call uh, King uh, or his widow or whatever, uh, but, uh, and Daddy King said, I'm going to support Kennedy. But uh, was Kennedy a liberal, or did he hate liberals? John F. Kennedy was not a far-left liberal. John F. Kennedy was a great American patriot. He believed in American exceptionalism, he loved American history, and he believed that America had a special role in the world. And he was strongly anti-communist. As much as Richard Nixon or Ronald Reagan, J.F. Kennedy was a militant, muscular anti-communist and a believer in human freedom. Look what he said in Berlin. Come, let them come to Berlin. We don't build a wall to keep our people in. Mm -hmm. In June 63 at American University, when he gave that speech about cooperating with the Soviets and seeking peace in a nuclear test ban, he wouldn't soft pedal. He said communism is repugnant to freedom and the dignity of man. JFK himself said, I'm not one of those liberals, don't call me one of those. He believed in aggressive engagement with our enemies, missile defense, counterinsurgency, special forces, low taxes. What's left wing or liberal about those things? Why do the liberals embrace him? He's the darling of the liberals. Well, they've forgotten who he is. And I think it's important for this 50th anniversary to remember the real JFK. Put aside all the wild conspiracy theories of grassy knolls and multiple and conflicting conspiracy theories. We owe it to him to remember who he was and why he was great and why, in many ways, he was such a great American. His image has been hijacked, in a way, mm. just as people on the left have tried to hijack the meaning of Abraham Lincoln and turn him into a New Deal-type Democrat. They forget the real Lincoln. I don't know if John Kennedy could even be a liberal Democrat today. W wouldn't he have to be a conservative Democrat, maybe even a Republican? <laughs> if you look at JFK, yeah. and they don't want to hear this, if you look at JFK issue by issue, he was a patriotic conservative who believed in low taxes, strong defense, and engagement with our enemies. He didn't apologize for America's greatness. JFK relished it. You know, I'm just a little aside uh, years ago when I was in Washington working on a 
uh, Senate committee, I believe I, I had a chance to, um, you know, have dinner at a group where he and Jackie were before they got married. And I must say, he was an extraordinarily nice guy. He was just a real nice human being. And uh, <clears throat> does your book point that out? Yes, because what I really try to do for the 50th anniversary is focus on what really happened that day, the real facts. This story could have been written by Shakespeare. It's the great American tragedy, and the hero, John Kennedy, left the play in the middle of the second act. And he was a great guy. And what we've got to remember is that on that day, a wife lost her husband, mm. two children lost their father, America lost her president. America changed with the death of John Kennedy, and for the worse. And Jackie, on the anniversary of his death, the first anniversary, she said, you've got to remember who he really was. Think of him as this little boy growing up sick all the time, reading in bed about America's heroes and American history, and maybe other children will be inspired by him to do that and love their country. And she said, in the end, this is what my husband stood for. This is what his death means. She said, he believed Life shouldn't be for your comfort and your pleasure only. It should be to serve others and serve your country. And Jackie said, my husband believed that one man can make a difference and that every man should try. James, that's inspiring. That uh, lifts us to heights and, and makes us nostalgic for a return to Camelot. Thank you so much. The book is called End of Days, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, James Swanson, a lot of people are talking about it now, and a lot of people are reading it. You can get it wherever books are sold, Amazon and... Uh Fascinating and so interesting, Pat, that you actually met the president before yeah. and his wife, Jackie. Well, you know, I, I thought Jackie was a reporter for the now defunct Washington Examiner, whatever the name of that uh, paper was where she worked. And uh, she was just kind of this cute thing. And I thought he's just, it's just a dally. It's, it can't even be anything serious about this <laughs> because, you know, this guy is, is more serious. He's for policy. Well, uh, I they was wrong. Yeah, they got married. They got married. But in any event, he was was just a real nice guy. And, um, you know, you, 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 in a social setting like that, it was just, you know, that's why yeah. people liked him. And, and, uh, what a great memory.